Hey guys, we're sitting here again at the workbench. Today we're going to do a little actual work. Uh, this is a Pullman sleeper. I don't exactly remember the configuration, but it's made by the coachyard. Um, real quick, while it's upside down, I'll just show you the beautiful underbody detail. I think in one of my videos I discussed how uh, the generator worked on these older cars, and you can actually see the generator modeled right here. Uh, and this would have been driven with gears on this axle. Um, so, just really cool. This is a heavyweight, so it has some really interesting appliances. To me, this these are some of my favorite cars. I don't understand why no plastic company has made a really high quality heavyweight. I believe it's coming. It just hasn't come soon enough. So, this is a coachyard car. Um, this is really the only option for really top-notch heavyweights. This and Shorm Shops, that's about it. Um, both brass. So anyway, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be adding the diaphragms, which come in a separate parts bag. This was to prevent them from being damaged in shipping. These particular diaphragms, these are the factory coachyard ones, these do not move. Um, but that's okay. One day I'll upgrade them, but for now I want to get them on. Um, and they're really easy to get on. All you need is Formula 560 canopy glue. You can buy this on Amazon Prime, get it in two days. This is the stuff you use for applying detail parts on the outside of painted brass. Um, it's sticky. It's water soluble, so if you need to remove it later on, um, you can really easily do that. It's extremely fluid, extremely. So be careful with it. You don't want to accidentally pour it. So because it's so uh, fluid, I took a little already and I put it on this card. You can see it right there. You can see it doesn't really move, but um, it dries clear. And uh, I've, I've been letting it sit set up there for about five minutes now just to get a little tacky. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of these out. Um, this was the Brass Trains item number from the previous owner. Um, I did not buy it from Brass Trains, but somebody did. You can actually use the old numbers to find the old photos. I'll show you that if uh, maybe later in this video, or I'll cut right now and you'll see it. Let's take a look at it. So first off, this is the diaphragm with the mechanism. This is the side that goes against the car the side without the striker plate. This is the striker plate right here. And with the top, the tip, that's going to be the top. So that's going to go down in this case since the car is upside down. You could do this upside, uh, right side up, either, whatever you want to do. Uh, a lot of this is up to you. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to get a toothpick. Okay, we're back. I found the toothpicks. I don't know where they went. So this is going to be really simple. And, and you know what, maybe I will put this right side up. Actually, actually, you know what? We're going to pause this video right here. I have an even better idea. Okay, changed the setup. Uh, I did something that I learned from another group member. It was a great idea. Uh, I took a USPS shoebox. You can get these uh, from the USPS uh, custom mailing website or whatever. They're free. You can order a box of 50 for free. It's great. Um, one of my favorite things about the USPS website is that. And these boxes, this is probably the most common box I use to ship. So if you need to ship stuff, get these boxes. So anyway, uh, I put bubble wrap in the box and then I put some plastic between the car and the bubble wrap. I don't like you having bubble wrap physically touching models, even though, yes, it's plastic, it should protect the model. Um, sometimes bubble wrap is sticky. Some of the modern bubble wrap is sticky, and it will destroy the paint on any model, plastic, brass, whatever. So, anyway, here's the diaphragm. Um, we're going to put a very thin amount of glue around this whole area. So 
This has now been sitting for about 10 minutes. It's a little tackier at this point. Um, still very, very liquidy. And that's what this, I mean, this stuff is really, really great. So, anyway. Just a thin amount. I'm going to do this a little off camera because it'll be easier for me. And, and I can already feel the stick in the glue. Once again, this is water soluble. So if one day you really need to remove it or replace it, you can take it right off. Now at this point, you could directly apply it or even give it a little more time to keep setting. Um, this already feels pretty sticky to me. So anyway, I'm going to show you where I'm at. Very little glue. Very little. There's... Uh, it's almost clear in some parts. That's how little glue I used. Um, you really don't need a lot. This stuff is really good. Most of the stuff I'm showing you all here today I learned from Boyd Reyes, who is the passenger car painter. So anyway, I'm going to take this, square it up, I'm going to apply it. I'm actually going to get down next to it then I can really make sure it's straight. Make sure it's centered before I even touch it. This stuff has some grip and I'm, I, I really mean that. It, it's set. That's it. Um, so now I'm going to move it just a little bit, make sure it's 100% right. You really want to get this right. Because, yes, you can move it. You can move it. I've said it. But do it once and never have to do it again. There we go. I think that's perfect. I'm going to take it out of the uh, plastic wrap I made, put it right back in front of the camera. And I think, uh, I think it's set. I'm going to take one more look at it, make sure it's centered, make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to give it a little pressure. And boom, that's done. And it ain't going anywhere, that's for sure. Still, you could still move it at this point, but it ain't going anywhere. This is this is really good stuff, I'm telling you. Um, so I'm gonna give it a little more pressure here, just for a second. And there you go. Doesn't it look better already with a diaphragm? Here's the other side without a diaphragm yet. So much better. So, so much better. Also, one thing I just want to show you all. Look at the door. This is the vestibule end. Actually, this car has two vestibules. Not all, not all cars, especially of this era, do. So, just a, a really neat feature. This is a beautiful car. So anyway, I'm going to do the second side. I'm going to show you guys on the layout what it looks like in the end. I'm also going to install the couplers today since they have not yet been installed. Okay guys, now we're on the layout. It's done. Uh, I'm gonna show you this real quick. Now it's only been about a half hour since I placed this on, if that. Uh, it's totally stuck. It's not going anywhere. I added the couplers. Uh, KD58s because I wanted them to look as realistic as possible. And uh, yeah, this, this car is beautiful. Bathroom windows with the tile work. Now behind it is another Cochard car actually. I'm going to show you how these two couple up. This Cochard car is a much older one. Uh, the difference is this one actually has operating Cochard diaphragms. Um, unfortunately, this one didn't come with the operating ones, but uh, whatever. Um, I'm sure I can get some one day. 
Um, I'm not that concerned though because uh, generally they they although they look great, they prove finicky. So I'm going to show you that real quick. You can see the diaphragms now they don't touch. Um, unfortunately, because they're slightly different, they don't. I could fix that if I did closer coupling, which is an option. Um, actually, the coach yard car, this one has numerous uh, holes for where you can put the coupler, and uh, the coach yard actually sells special coupler pockets that can slide back and forth so that they touch perfectly. I don't have any in stock right now, so I just did a normal KD number 58 with a normal gearbox, nothing special but you can see that they don't exactly touch obviously um, also the coupler height's a little amiss but that's for another day what I really wanted to show was putting the diaphragms on um, and uh, it's really not a hard process so anyway uh, these are two beautiful cars uh, this one a little about this one this is a 1938 built Pullman uh, it is a four bedroom four compartment two double bedroom a sleeper and uh, it was part of the uh, original chief uh, I don't think the super chief I think it was part of the chief this is a particular one was pro finished by Boyd Reyes it doesn't have an interior like the the Pullman Union Pacific car but uh, thankfully there are part partitions so you can't actually see through the car so it still looks good um, I don't think it really needs an interior in this case, especially when half the windows are closed. It looks really great. Um, so, also, look at those trucks. Aren't those interesting trucks? Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video of the Lake Livingston, Li Livingstone. Um, I really enjoyed putting this together. Uh, and showing you all because uh, I think it's important even if you don't use these tricks on brass models you can use them uh, essentially the same way with with a lot of plastic so um, I hope you all enjoyed a lot of these tricks I learned from Boyd Reyes who is the passenger gar car master um, and uh, if you have any further questions please leave them in the comments subscribe uh, also join the Brass Collectors and Operators group on Facebook. Ask questions there. People are always happy to help. Um, so, thanks for watching, and uh, keep training. Bye.